Okay, boys and girls, today we are taking a look at the Mora Cubs Bowl. Now, this has to be probably one of the most requested knives on my YouTube channel as far as features. And in a way, it makes a lot of sense because I've talked about the Garberg and I've talked about the Eldris. Now, we talk about the Cubs Bowl. So, without any further ado, guys, six years later, six years after this thing dropped, maybe five years, uh, we're finally talking about the cons pool. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so this thing is definitely highly reflective, so I will try to not blind you guys too much, but I will be talking to you guys about this knife and overall what I think about it from its performance to is it still worth it in this day and age with some competitive options and with the other knives that are out there on the market. So let's jump into it. So starting off with the cons bull and essentially what it is. Now this is a newer version of when the knife first dropped, it dropped with a green handle and uh, it looked just a little bit different and it didn't quite have this uh, sharpener on there and it didn't quite have the ferro rod. So this is a little bit of a newer version, but essentially the whole of the knife remains unchanged. And essentially this is the uh, spiritual successor to the Mora 2000 and the primary way in which you can tell is due to this secondary grind on the blade. Okay. So the reason why it actually has these two grinds as well before we jump into the blade too much is to essentially allow a better ability to slice and do finer tasks with the front half of the blade while still giving you a very rigid, very strong kind of back end to do things like batoning and feather sticking and such stuff. You can tell that this is definitely evident by looking at the spine of the blade where you can see that secondary grind really helps pare down the blade thickness. So you have a very thin uh, blade at the front and a not so thin blade at the back. Now, in addition to that, the blade spine is also very sharp, as you guys could hopefully see in some of the test footage here, where I was scraping the bark of a scraping the bark of a birch tree and striking the ferro rod to start it on fire. And it's actually a pretty effective strategy when you have a spine this sharp. I do have to say, it is quite sharp. Just like the Eldris and the Garberg, they really spent a good amount of time making sure that the spines on these blades are very, very sharp. So overall, as far as it goes, I think that the more Conspool, just like the Eldris and just like the Garberg, are pretty solid knives. Now, the Garberg itself has been, in my opinion, kind of beaten by knives like the Pterosaur, which we will get to in just a little bit, but the Conspool, as far as what it is, holds its own pretty darn well. This is a stainless steel blade and it's in 12C27. So overall, the blade is pretty well made and it has a good amount of thought process behind it with the dual grind. And uh, I can confirm, as you'd suspect, it definitely does work very well. Having a thinner blade stock towards the front allows you to slice and process uh, game animals and natural resources with greater ease. So it does have some merit to it. And of course, this back end is still very sharp and a very nice stout Scandinavian grind. And honestly, I found it to work just fine with making feather sticks and notching. So overall, I have to say this is a pretty solidly built blade. It also took some pretty well seasoned birch wood down with great ease. So it is still pretty stout. And as far as ergos go, it is definitely a joy to use. Uh, this does have a rubberized plastic handle. So the kind of darker rubber here or darker or darker orange I should say is rubberized and gives good traction and the uh, kind of middle portion here is just hard plastic so definitely a very climate neutral handle as far as it's not going to get too cold it's not going to get too warm at any given point and it does offer great traction so it has a lot of the pros of the Garberg in that regard uh, it is also very ambidextrous so the top of this handle is modeled the way the bottom is so if you wanted to hold it in reverse grip and do things like chest levers you can certainly do that as well so overall i'd say it's a pretty darn well constructed blade uh, i think the only thing that i kind of dislike is i do wish that there was slightly higher quality blade materials on this one but at the same time for this blade coming in at under $40 and under $50 with a ferro rod in this kind of setup here, it is pretty hard to beat. 
So, is it was it was it ahead of its time back when it was released? I would say yes, and it still holds a lot of good potential even nowadays. It certainly holds its own against some of the more competitive options we will bring out. So let's talk about those. So lining out all those sheets. So these are the two primary competitive options that I wanted to talk about because they're in the same blade thickness, size range, and price range. So the first one is the Mora Bushcraft Black, and the second one is the Condor Knives Pterosaur. And uh, both of these blades, or all of these blades as a base configuration, are under $40 or right around $40. And I think they're all pretty fantastic in their own right. Now, what really might stand out or seal the deal or not seal the deal for you with the Mora Kunzbul is the fact that it is a stainless steel. Both of these two other options are high carbon steels, basically 1095 and 1095. So you do have to be more cautious with rusting, though the DLC coating on the Bushcraft Black is pretty solid. But definitely with the Condor Pterosaur, you have to be pretty cautious with it, or at least mindful, I should say, when it comes to the blade steel uh, rusting or taking on a patina. So do bear that in mind, but at the same time, you also get the performance of uh, high carbon steels out of both of these. As competitive options go, I definitely like the Cons Bull a bit more than the Bushcraft Black, though the Bushcraft Black is a very fun knife to use and I do genuinely enjoy it quite a bit. Bushcraft Black does have some ergonomic oddities and while the whole handle is rubberized, which is a pro, I found that this handle, especially the angle, never really handles shock from batoning very well. So while this blade is definitely batonable as far as strength goes, it's very uncomfortable to baton where the cum spool is definitely a lot nicer on the hand and there is basically no hand shock when you are batoning even through hardened materials or hardened kind of woods. Uh, in addition to that, the handle on this Bushcraft Black is just slightly heavier because you have this whole hardened plastic running through the core of it uh, and out the back and then you have rubber over it, whereas this one has a use of rubber and plastic. So while it's hard to show on camera, this knife is noticeably lighter and noticeably more comfortable. Once again, it also has the ambidextrous ergonomics, making it a bit better and more versatile. Moving over to the Pterosaur, this one is all hard plastic uh, as far as ergonomics go, but I do really enjoy the blade shape. This is probably the closest uh, competitor, I would say, to the Kung's Bull. Um, just because it is one of my favorites downright, and I might say that the uh, Pterosaur slightly edges it out just because I am a little bit more preferential to 1095 as opposed to 12C27, but as far as it goes outside of blade steels, they're both pretty fantastic. This one, once again, has a pretty neutral grip so that you can easily, you know, do chest levers, hold it backwards, you can choke up pretty easily on it, and it's going to be very comfortable, very shock resistant handle, and really solid ergonomics. Um, but still, probably the ergonomics might be just a little bit better with the con spool. I really do enjoy the grip angle on this thing, it is very nice and uh, it feels very right in the hand. Once again, too, it will also be lighter than the Pterosaur, however, the Pterosaur does have the advantage that it is full tang. So, there are some trade-offs there, though I will say, if you are looking at a blade for durability, really all three of these blades are pretty darn durable. Um, I've batoned extensively all three of them, on camera and off camera, and they both are pretty solid, or they all are pretty solid. None of these are going to break on you, and uh, they will deliver the results. So, in summary, is the Cubs Bull still worth it? I think this is a fantastic knife for bushcrafting, especially for entry level. Uh, these two are solid contenders, don't get me wrong. The Pterosaur is pretty awesome, and the Bushcraft Black has a lot of venerability to it. But the Cubs Bull definitely is an interesting and uh, unique take, especially with the fact of its dual grind. And it has really solid ergonomics and a very light weight overall. It also is pretty nice that it comes in a high-vis orange as well as a green that's actually pretty similar to that green. Uh, but overall, the 
The Constable is a fantastic knife. I love it in addition to the Eldris and the Garbert, and it fits right into my more budget blades. This is certainly one that when I'm teaching people bushcraft and survival skills that I'm going to roll out and have people practice, especially if I'm doing more fine toothed skills where we're processing natural resources, game animals, or even doing things like carving. This uh, belly being very thin, and I mean very thin, is extremely slicey and it cuts through materials with greater ease than back here, but I do love how they have this dual grind because it allows you to have a good amount of robust blade to do harder duty tasks around the camp but also allows you to have a nice, fine, thin blade to do the more slicey kind of fine tooth things that you might need to. As far as the size goes as well, it's pretty fantastic in overall size. As you guys can see, it stacks up just uh, right alongside all of these blades. It's about the same length, and it's about the same thickness, coming in at about an eighth of an inch thick. So overall, it's a pretty fantastic um, camp knife and once again considering that you can get it for under 40 and under 50 dollars even with a ferro rod and a sharpener is pretty awesome so if you have not already checked out a cons pool uh, i would highly recommend it even before buying one i knew i was gonna love it because i've owned so many different more knives this one included that uh they really make fantastic products especially for a budget oriented person now is it perfect is it as great as my more expensive you know three or two three four hundred dollar knives no it's not quite as good as those and it doesn't have the same type of materials but if you're looking to get started with bushcrafting and you're looking for something that's a pretty venerable contender especially something that's stainless steel that will hold its own against other solid bushcrafting knives i would highly recommend checking out the con school as always guys hopefully you enjoyed the video god bless and i'm out